It's been over a year since The Matrix Resurrections tried to restart a story that had ended almost two decades ago. It's kind of a given that they wanted to keep the ball rolling with that movie, but its commercial and critical performance shocked Warner Brothers out of the idea. But we think they gave up too soon, and in this video, we're going to explain why. We'll start by addressing the most controversial part of Resurrections, the returns of Neo and Trinity. Now, as much as we love these characters and Morpheus in the original trilogy, you have to accept that their story basically ended with The Matrix Revolutions. Neo fulfilled his promise. Prophecy. Not the one that everyone said he had, but the one that was implied to us through the subtext. He was the one who would end the conflict between the machines and the humans, which he did. That should be the end of the line for him, right? But the Matrix Resurrections came up with a way to bring Neo and Trinity back. It turns out that the analyst studied Neo's body and concluded that by keeping Neo and Trinity in the Matrix, close to each other but unaware of their past, the machines could keep harvesting bioelectricity from them. His plan is foiled as Bugs and her friends free the two of them, and Trinity turns out out to have similar powers to Neo's. The movie ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. The resurrected couple tells the analyst that they intend to use their power to remake the Matrix. What does that mean? Based on what people thought of the movie, audiences aren't interested in finding out. But what if we told you there's actually an interesting story here? We tell you to take the red pill and join us, but red pills have gained a completely different meaning on the internet. Now let's say that we kept Neo and Smith in the story. Why would this be a good idea? The reason we think that Neo should be a part of the story is that Agent Smith is as well, and their dynamic still has room to be explored. As with everything in this series, reading between the lines will show you things you'd never seen before. You see, while Neo was supposedly destined to save humanity from the machines, the architect reveals in nerdy language that Neo and the prophecy of the One is something built into the program of the Matrix. It turns out that in the past, the humans didn't like being forced into the Matrix, and so the architect allowed Zion to come into existence as an alternative. Of course, Zion is kind of a squalid place with trippy raves, so humans would feel like they've chosen the Matrix. The role of Neo, then, is that every time Zion gets too big, he's meant to lead the people of Zion in a charade where they think they're taking the system down. At a certain point in the story, Neo is supposed to meet the Architect and make a choice. He can either save 23 residents of Zion, or he can choose love and fly off to save Trinity, allowing the machines to destroy all of Zion. While five Neos played this game, the sixth one, our Neo, managed the impossible and struck peace between Zion and the machines. Also, we bet you'll never guess what or who was the key to Neo's success. As much as Agent Smith hates Neo and everything he stands for, he's the one who allowed Neo to break the cycle. Not on purpose, we're sure, but he and his existence were the things that caused this cycle of the Matrix to deviate from the path. Smith, in the movies, was a lot more ambitious than any of the other agents, who were programs in human form that simply followed their code. By merging with his beloved Mr. Anderson at the end of the first movie, he managed to break free of the agent program. Smith sought ultimate power over the Matrix, far beyond what even the machines had. That made him a third party in the conflict between Neo and the machines, someone who was at odds with basically everyone else. This was something that had never happened before, and the machines couldn't account for it. The destructive potential of Smith, who was going around and assimilating all the humans in the fake world and programs like the Oracle, became a massive problem for both the machines and Neo. The fact that Neo was the only one who was even remotely capable of beating Smith allowed Neo to negotiate a truce between humans and the machines. Ergo, as the Ark architect would say, Smith's ambitions caused an unintended concordance that finally broke the status quo that the humans had been trapped under for so long. With all that in mind, let's now consider how this dynamic could be revisited in a new trilogy. In The Matrix Resurrections, the revival of Neo also allows Agent Smith to return, this time as a douchey tech CEO. While the two of them have a fight earlier in the movie, Smith eventually fights the analyst too, as he tries to get revenge for being imprisoned. But when we look at the ending, where Neo and Trinity resolve to remake The Matrix, we we think Smith might be someone who'd be willing to join him in that cause. Of course, Smith wouldn't want to do this for altruistic reasons. He was power-hungry before, and there's no reason why that would have changed. But if the gang is about to take on the machines, they'll need all the help they can get. A movie of Neo and Smith working together would make for a really fun twist on their dynamic, as their shared history will get in the way of things. Also, if Neo and Io get drawn into this conflict, she will definitely be a lot less willing to tolerate Smith than Neo is. If you really wanted to continue the story of this series, and you really wanted to capitalize on Keanu Reeves' resurgence and popularity, this could be one way to do it. Of course, we're not that Wachowskis, so they could come up with a better idea, but then, their ideas in Resurrections didn't really work, did they? Moving on, we have another edgy proposal. Do we really need Neo? The fact is that we spent most of this video so far coming up with a new story to follow with the character, but his story is technically over. It'd be like making Luke, Han, and or Leia central characters in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Why do that when you 
you can have some new characters and new possibilities instead. We did actually get some new characters in Resurrections. While there's a guy named Morpheus, he's essentially a brand new character, and the movie could explore his story and how he's different from Lawrence Fishburne's old character. Bugs and her friends were also pretty cool, being different enough from Neo to bring a new perspective on the universe. And obviously, Io is a whole setting which could have as much depth as Zion did in the original trilogy. There's a lot of sense in bringing back Neo, Trinity, Agent Smith, and Niobe as a way to reintroduce people to the world of the Matrix. And yet, those movies are so old now. For a lot of people who aren't as familiar with the original trilogy, these characters might bring more baggage to the table than anything else, though we're totally down to keep Niobe as a minor character in the new era of the Matrix. At the end of the day, the new trilogy needs something to tie to the old one, and Niobe could be it. Now, we know what you're thinking. Can the Matrix work without Neo? Well, folks, we certainly think it can. There's a whole lot of Matrix out there that doesn't even include Neo. If you've ever seen the movies, you might be surprised at how big this franchise actually is. If we're talking about projects outside the quadrilogy, we've got to start with the Animatrix. Depending on who you ask, the sequels to The Matrix aren't even that great, and this anthology of animated shorts is much better. Filmed as part of the franchise extension that came with The Matrix Reloaded, it features nine short stories that all take place during the past and present of The Matrix universe. And guess what? Neo only appears in a single one, and Trinity appears in two. Beyond that, we also have The Matrix Online, a massively multiplayer online RPG that took place in the aftermath of the original trilogy. Clearly, Morpheus was in this game. He's right there on the cover, but Neo wasn't. Like, at all. After all, Mr. Anderson died at the end of the previous movie. The game told a proper story of the Matrix universe, and its events are usually considered canon. So you see, Neo is to this universe what the Skywalkers are to the Star Wars universe. His story was massive and impactful to the universe, but in the end, he's just one aspect of a tapestry, which is black with green lines of code all over it. Next up, if the next Matrix movie completely ditches Neo, here's one avenue it can explore. A pretty obvious way to go would be to go back in time, in other words, a prequel. And if we're making prequels, then the place to start would be at the downfall of humanity. This was a period covered in two parts of the Animatrix's The Second Renaissance. But while that movie told the specific story of how machines first conquered humanity and turned them into batteries, there must have been more to the world than that. During these days, humans managed to develop artificial intelligence, and they use it to build completely sentient robots to act as their slaves. It's 2023, and AIs are getting really good at mimicking humanity. Now is the perfect time to do a movie like this. We think that the movie should spotlight a dynamic we haven't seen before between humans and the machines that'll conquer them one day. Maybe it could show us a way in which war could have been prevented entirely. Maybe we could see a vision of harmony between humans and machines, where there was no enslaving involved and the two races lived as equals. The tragic irony, of course, would be that this potential would never be realized. But that's just one idea we have. That's it for today's video. Do you think the Matrix franchise has a future? Do you think Neo and the rest of the original trilogy cast has a part in it? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.